to a beautiful edition of Dialogue Box on Lawson, Nigeria. <laughs> it's a very beautiful, bright and sunny day. And don't forget that it's also the Muslim festival, Eid El Fitri. And uh, today and tomorrow are the public holidays that the government has already set aside to celebrate those Muslim holidays. So for today, we'll continue with our work. That is uh, getting everybody to be involved in the process of nation building. And don't forget that you have a role to play. You have your own quotes that to contribute. So this morning, it's been a very, very, um, let's call it a broad discussion on the education sector, how the reopening of schools, uh, how the uh, private sector, that's the private schools, how they are working with the terms and conditions that the government is given. And even the public schools themselves, are they really prepared and the safety measures that are being put in place? Then we also looked at, we've looked at the examinations for that, um, sorry, as examinations that have been slated already for the month of August, August 17 to be precise. So, and also several uh, analysts of the opinion that the examination dates are a bit too close. So this morning we will move on still on the education sector, but this time around we are looking at the angle of ASU is still kicking against the reopening of schools. And they've insisted that even if the uh, secondary schools and the primary schools, maybe the primary six resume, they still, that's the universities, public universities, uh, federal universities will still not resume. So we will look at that and um, why that is um, occurring coming from the ASU president. But before we go into that, let's have some news updates to give us some insight into what is happening around the nation and areas where we think government has done well or has not done well enough. All right, we have it on the first one on our list here that the federal government has announced examination dates for students in various graduating classes in the country. So that's the NECO examinations, NAPTEB, the common entrance examinations for those in primary six to GSS one, then tertiary institutions were however not included. So for the West African senior certificate examinations is now like we said earlier, August 17. Then for NAPTEB, that's September 21. Oh, sorry, September 21 to October 15. That's is going to be spanning uh, the period of September 21 to October 15. Then NECO will be October 5th to November 17th, or rather November 18th. Then for the GSS-3 student um, certificate examination, that will be for August 24th to September 7th. Then national common entrance examinations into GSS-1 will be October 17th. So for these dates, every school is supposed to prepare and then work with the dates that have been released from the Ministry of Education, Minister of uh, State for Education, Emeka Wajiba, who gave the directives and they've already released everything that the schools need to be aware of in preparation for the examinations. Then we also have it that ASU, like we have said, kicks against the reopening of schools. So we'll give you more details on that. Let's still move on to the second. All right, now, the Nigerian police boss, that's uh, Mohamed Adamu, has recalled some officers attached to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to report, say, about 20 zonal and sectional heads of the police were affected by the recall. So they have been asked to report to force headquarters in Abuja from where they are expected to be given new assignments. So the IGP had ordered the withdrawal of policemen attached to the MAGU that's Ibrahim Magu, uh, Magu's case shortly after the probe. So it is to be noted that apart from the 12 directors of the commission that have been suspended, the commission secretary, Olani Kweku Oluko Yode, is also on indefinite suspension. So that's coming from the police. The recall of key sectional heads and officers that have been at attached to the EFCC. So that's not very good. And we think that the EFCC has to <laughs> be rebranded at this stage. Because if Nigerians are already losing confidence in this uh, institution, then a lot more has to be done to give the vote of confidence to Nigerians that 
EFCC is not as it is being, maybe the information going everywhere that these are the ones that are supposed to be fighting corruption should not now be the ones that are being uh, maybe probed and investigated for corruption. So the federal government needs to do a lot more to ensure that those that are being uh, appointed to different maybe offices and different uh, roles, whatever role they are playing, they are really the right people for the job. They are not just there to make a name or anything else, but they are the right people for the job. Then moving on, we have it that the World Bank's International Development Association, IDA, has approved a $500 million credit to Nigeria to support adolescent girls, uh, they call it Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment, Agile. I take that again, Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment, Agile. So the goal of Agile, as it is spelled, or we don't know if it's Agile, they are calling it, but what we have here is A-G-I-L-E, and that's, that is simply Agile. So the goal of Agile project is to improve secondary education opportunities among girls in targeted areas. So for the International Development Association, IDU, that's uh, an arm of the World Bank. So in a statement said that secondary schools should be used as platforms to empower girls through education, life skills, health education, gender-based violence, that's GBV, and uh, gender-based violence awareness and prevention, neg negotiation skills, self agency and digital literacy skills. So whatever some of these ones mean, I think they understand better, but the role is to empower girls and give them the sense of uh, confidence to be able to face the world and also acquire the right skills as they move on in life. So the World Bank Country Director for Nigeria, Subom Chaduri, has said that the seven beneficiary states include Kano State, Kebi State, Kaduna State, Katsina State, Bornu State, Plateau State, and Ikiti State. So he added that the project will also offer half a million girls from the poorest households with financial incentives in the form of scholarship to further support their retention and completion of secondary schools. So, um, yes, so this is a very key and a very positive one coming from the World Bank, and we believe that it should be monitored. The only thing we have to say about this is that we are just interested in seeing to the execution of some of these maybe credit schemes or grants or whatever that is coming from any part of the world to Nigeria. If the World Bank, for instance, is offering a $500 million credit to Nigeria to take care of adolescent girls, that's a lot. So apart from the government just announcing it, a lot should be done to ensure that these projects are well carried out and well executed and the role the goal of the release of those funds are fully maximized so for the grants and all the other initiatives that are carried out that um, generate some form of sponsorship we also use this as an opportunity to crave the indulgence of the organizations the maybe non-governmental um, initiatives or organizations or even government organizations or agencies or institutions, whatever name they go by. What matters is that any grant and um, sponsorship that comes from any maybe arm of the world, maybe World Bank or UNESCO or whatever, a lot of it has been happening for a, for a lot for some years, but much more should be done to see to the full execution of these programs. Then moving on, we have a, a very good one coming from the Tony Elumelu Foundation. They've announced that Tony Elumelu is a group chairman of United Bank of Africa, will feature in the Time 100 talk series today. Wow, that's a big one. And that's happening Thursday, July 30, today exactly. And the series, they will feature live conversations with influential newsmakers across the world. So to feature alongside this Nigerian billionaire and philanthropist at Bill Gates, controversial Bill Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft, and Tammy Duckworth, the American senator from Illinois, then discuss, discussions will, just a second, discussions which spotlight solutions and encourage actions towards a better world will start. 
at 1 p.m. EDT, which is 6 p.m. Nigerian time GMT. So that's later this evening, 6 p.m. Nigerian time. That's when that particular uh, project will be going on. All right. Then we also have, just a second, we have a call here. Hello? Hello? Good morning, from Nigeria. Good morning. Who is on the line? Where are you calling from? I'm Stephen. I'm calling from Bidin uh, City, Edo State. Okay. What's uh, your, you called us for the education sector or the ASU strike? Does any of the, is still on the education sector, definitely. So, what exactly do you have in mind? Yes, I saw the caption uh, ASU uh, kick against the reopening of schools. Okay. And I wanted to, to keep in my comment okay. on that. Yeah, actually, it's a great one. First, I must comment uh, on Nigeria for what they actually did. Thank you so time. much. Thank you. And uh, I actually want to talk about that part of ASU uh, kicking against the opening of schools. Of schools yeah. Very good one. I support and advocate what ASU is actually uh, saying here, what they actually standing for. Okay. You see, as it stands now, there is no system put in place. There are no structures put in place that will help to uh, put all these uh, things, uh, we are in the present condition, yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. There's nothing at all that has been done by the government. There's nothing at all that has been done by the schools. Okay. To ensure that the safety of the students, that is, the, the, the safety of the students is actually guaranteed. Okay. To avoid more casualty all right. of COVID-19. So I feel what ASU is, has actually done is the best they can do now until the government and stakeholders in the tertiary institution sectors have come up with the best possible means to curb COVID-19 in higher institutions. Because if you look at what we have now, what is obtainable in higher institutions, mm -hmm. we will have facilities to cater for students. Mm -hmm. If you go to some special institutions, you find uh, it's a very vast or large number of students in one small class. Yeah. You see, that is not, that is one parent that is negating the safety measures that has been put forth by medical experts to cope COVID-19. So I feel that for now, until the government and stakeholders are ready to put them together and ensure that there is safety guarantee for mm. children coming back to school, schools should not be reopened. <laughs> All right. Are you a student? No, I'm not a student. I'm, I'm actually a graduate from. Okay, now with your view so far, which is very, very good and is welcome, but do you think the government can meet up with some of those requirements you are asking for within the next few months? And if possible, I don't know how long it will take, but the, the year is running so fast. And by next year, we are expecting that at least more students should have been churned out that are ready or waiting for admission. Even by now, a lot of them are waiting for admission. So how long do you think some of these maintenance uh, Upgrading facilities, maintenance, we maybe acquiring more space or whatever else that government needs to do. How long do you think it will take them? And do you see it as a practical measure that they can really carry out as uh, proposed? Well, I feel that what the government should actually start planning towards or stakeholders and stakeholders actually should start working towards is ensuring that uh, facilities are put in place. Okay. If they, can have, if, they, if they can have these facilities put in place, it will really help them. What I mean is, if you look at schools that you have uh, overpopulated uh, students in such schools, I don't think for now they should allow such schools to commence operations. Okay. Academic activities should still be on hold. All so right. I'm looking at the rest of the year. Let the government sit down, stakeholders sit together. I then look for possible measures to ensure that COVID-19 is not going to be a menace. Okay. Schools should be reopened. So I think January should be the best possible time for them to reopen schools. But suffice us to have for this period from August down to December, the government.
government can sit and then look at uh, the possible measures for them to, to contain COVID-19 in protection to reopening of schools. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a very good one. Thank you so much for your suggestion. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So we look forward to hearing more from you. All right. Thank you. All right. That's Stephen that called from Benin City. And sorry, we had to pause our news updates to take that call. All right. So we still need every one of us to make his or her, or her rather, comments or suggestion. And you can call us on 90 so we'll quickly give us a little more update of our news and we'll move on from that. All right, we just gave you an update that Tony Lumelu is a feature in Time 100 talk series today and with the Nigerian time, that is exactly by 6 p.m. Nigerian time for those who would like to participate in that. And that's a big one for Tony Lumelu, who is part of the top 100 top guys who are uh, let's use the world, shaking the world and making a difference. So we really, really identify with our, uh, we call him a Nigerian hero, Tony Lumeli. Then we have another good news coming to us from an indigenous of Edo State who has won the 2020 Akko Kane Prize for African writing with a story titled Grace Jones. So on Tuesday, Okoje Irene, Irene Nosin Okoje made headlines of prominent newspapers around the world after she emerged the winner of the 10,000 euro prize with her work receiving praise from the judges. So in a statement congratulating the Nigerian British author, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki described her as an enthralling storyteller who serenades readers with a unique blend of narrative styles. Then he says, Arinosin Okoje's Grace Jones was pronounced the winning short story for its radicality of logic, extraordinary imagination, and timely reflection of African consciousness. So this is a very big one, another major talent emerging from Nigeria, actually from Edo State, Nigeria. So Irene Osin Okoje, an indigenous of Edo State, has won the 2020 Akko Kane Prize for African Writing. 2020 Akko Kane Prize for African Writing. And that was with her story titled Grace Jones. So congratulations to Irene Osin Okoje. And at the same time, we also rejoice with her and we say more of, of um, this uh, very, very inspiring news is what we would like to hear across the world for Nigeria. Then moving on, just like we said earlier, today is uh, the Muslim holiday, Salah, Idel, Fitri, however you want to call it. But the president has said he will not receive any visitor during the Salah celebrations. So he said this, that this is in decision with, all right, sorry, let me take that again. He said the decision is in line with directive from the presidential task force on COVID-19. He said he will observe the idol Fitri prayers with his family at home, just as he did during the idol Cabrera. Kabir a little over two months ago. So in wishing all Muslims a safe and happy Salah, the president also reiterated the protocols as issued by the presidential task force that large gatherings as much as possible should be discouraged. But he emphasized the fact that he will not be receiving any visitor during the Salah holiday. Then on the international scene, a quick one here, Okay, before we go over to the international scene to wrap up this uh, news update, let's just give us um, a brief one here coming from Ogun State. Ogun State has been host to a lot of major uh, religious <laughs> gatherings across the nation. So worship centers that were shut since the month of March by the federal government as part of measures to contain the spread of coronavirus. Now the gateway states 
is uh, considering reopening most of these worship centers from August 14th. So the, the Gateway State, which is host to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Living Faith Church Worldwide at Songwater, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry, which is still along Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Deeper Life Christian, Deeper Christian Life Ministry, NASFAT, among others. So according to the governor, measures will be put in place to ensure the protocols or to ensure that protocols for preventing the spread of COVID-19 pandemic in these worship centers will be implemented. So Prince Abiodu made the announcement while addressing the state on the pandemic warned that any worship center that fails to follow all the guidelines, guidelines will be sanctioned. So some of the measures put in place include mandatory wearing of face masks to, uh, to church, sitting two meters apart, provision of hand washing facilities, and worship duration of not more than an hour, 30 minutes. So that, those are some of the um, measures that the state has put in place, but they are working towards opening most of these worship centers from August 14. All right, now on the international scene, like we said earlier, President Trump is defending the Nigerian doctor, Stella Emanuels. Just a second, we have another call coming in. A lot of people are still waiting and they really want us to discuss education. Hello. Hello. Good morning and Hello. welcome to Dialogue Box. Hello, Global Nigeria. Yeah, good morning and welcome to Dialogue Box. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. All right. I'm sorry, I'm able to talk and blow up my ear. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. That's a nice one. So, what do you have to say about the ASU's position that universities should still not open, even if the government has given a directive to that effect? Like, to me, I think ASU, they are right with their demand. They are very right with their demand. Because you cannot expect uh, uh, like uh, somebody going to wage war and you just expect the person to go without any arms or ammunition. Just the person just go to the war front and start waging war without giving the person proper uh, uh, gadgets and equipment and things that can protect the person from being harmed. Okay. That is the only thing the government wants to do. Putting people at the war front without preparing them for what is coming ahead. If the government could uh, restrict people to their homes and say everybody must be ready, everybody must watch that, if the government, uh, uh, if the government comes, yeah. ask for their rest. So government should actually put those things before the resumption. So I don't see any discrepancy. They should do what is right. Let government do what is right and put all those safety measures in place before school resumes. Because these are school lives. Okay, now, if, all right, if we, you, the stand you took is, is excellent, is good, that is the ideal, you know, very, very ideal. But the question I've been asking is that with the ideal situation, is it very practical right now to be fully implemented across the nation? Do you think the government has what it takes to do all the radical uh, maintenance, renovation, or you know, just name it. Everything that they need to do across uh, universities in the nation for their facilities. Is the government prepared the for thing, that? The thing is that I, from from what I understand about the government, government, I know they will never be set for anything. The <laughs> so the thing is, we should start from somewhere. Nigeria is for everybody, so we need to start building Nigeria by ourselves. Okay. So we should start from somewhere. Let government do what they can do and um, 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 empower those who can empower to do what they should do. Okay. Tell the, uh, what for, the private sector how they can come in. Everybody should do their own contribution, their own quota. It will work. It will work. All right. Everybody must not depend on the government. That I know. Okay. Because you can, there are some things you can do for yourself. Like private schools now, some other schools, they can handle some things for them. So they yeah. must not see that the government can do everything. Yeah. They can please let them take the right step. Let them put those right measures in place. This is great if you have a plan and you want people to come into the plan to so assist. 
you want to go a private sector, private sector company, whatever, whatever, to so come into the plan to assist. Mm -hmm. then let them go to a plan. Then when by the time you have no plan, then everybody do their own thing. Then there will not be a, 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 a direction on what you really want to achieve. Okay. So the government is talking that, oh, hey, this is what we want to achieve for schools before they resume. These are that. And they started doing so. You will see different sectors also rising up to see how they can come to good. All That's right. exactly what they did during this COVID 19. I was seeing a lot of face masks being sponsored by different companies okay. without being forced to do it. So let them come with a plan and tell us this is what they are planning to do and let them start. Okay. Then you can see how people will start rising up. So I think. Okay, all right. That's a good one. Thank you so much for calling and we appreciate your contribution. All right, thank you. Okay, so we continue a brief one here. We were talking about that on the international scene that President Trump is defending the Nigerian doctor, Stella Emmanuel, who has made claims to the effective working of hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. So US President Donald Trump has defended the viral video of Dr. Stella Emmanuel, and again approved the use of the disproved anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. In the White House briefing, the US President defended his decision to promote the viral video of a group of doctors promoting the use of hydroxychloroquine despite his own administration withdrawing emergency authorization for its use against the coronavirus. So although the World Health Organization is still saying that there is no proof that the, that the anti-malaria drug is effective as a coronavirus treatment, nor is it uh, a sure deal that it can really prevent the virus. So Dr. Stella, the Nigerian-born physician, has passionately promoted the use of hydroxychloroquine as a cure for coronavirus. And this is with proof of having successfully treated over 350 people in her own private clinic. All right, so we'll put a stop to that for now. And let's take one more call, another call from uh, one of our callers. Hello, are you on? I'm on, I'm on. Good, Good morning. morning, you are welcome. Who is calling and where are you calling from? From Lagos, okay. Yes. All right, you are welcome. What's your take on the school's resumption and ASU maintaining that even if the government gives a directive, universities will still not open? Uh, my take is that I'm, I'm, I'm with ASU on, on, on their stand. Okay. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the pandemic is, is real and the, the government needs to to show some responsibility from their own end. Okay. And uh, if, if they wouldn't, I, I think I'm right. I insisted that the government needs to put things in place for the to resume. Okay. Or to have students back in school. Okay. I would have to 100% on this. Okay. All right. Just a quick one before we let you go. Uh, yes. If we work with the plan that ASU is asking the government to come on board for, that would mean that students might have to be at home till even the end of the year. And no, they don't, they don't have to be at home till the end of the year. All of is asking for government to, 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 to do what they are supposed to do. It doesn't take much. A lot of, a lot of money has been raised through this pandemic. Why can't that carry to, to carry the place for a conducive environment to spend? That is all. It doesn't take much. It, can't, it shouldn't be. It's just that we have an irresponsible government. That is not the problem. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that because they are not going to do it. You should have to be able to All we need to do is to pressure the government to do what they need to do. And you should not go back to school as much oh. as possible. Okay, then a final one. We still have schools that their facilities are still not enough to take care of the number of students they have. Like in a class where maybe 50 students are supposed to uh to to sit and uh, take their lectures you have about 120 students in that class so what do you think the government can do in within this short time to address such and they are talking about social distancing uh, it's, 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 it's simple all they need to do is to is to space the, the timing the, the lecture hours and things like that it might take more like demanding on both 
school administration and the students themselves. Okay. But we all know that at the end of the day, it's for us to have students back in school. Whatever they need to do, you know, they just have to sit at the round table, look at critically, and put up a plan, proper plan. Okay. That make sure that everybody is back in school. Even with my, with my heart to extend extra hours to evenings, days mm -hmm. or things like that, it's possible. But it's really possible for us to have students back in school with all the procedures in place. All right. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate your call. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay. This is Dialogue Box on Blossom Nigeria. You can send your comments. You can, yeah, whatever you think, if you, you are, maybe you are not disposed to call in, you can also send your comments. 0905252510. And on Facebook, we are live right now. So wherever you are, you can be a part of this. What is the way forward? So we just finished our news update and we said, yes, uh, Dr. Stella Emanuel from the Houston, Texas, that has been frontlining the uh, group of doctors who have been trying to make a proof or tell the public, tell the world that hydroxychloroquine can take care of COVID-19, even though the World Health Organization is still saying that there is no proof for that. So really give her a big thumbs up for her boldness and courage. And we say that's a good one coming from a Nigerian in the United States. Then we've also given you different other updates and some of the beautiful things happening in the international scene. And don't forget our own writer, Irene Okoje, Irene Nosin Okoje, who has also won the 2020 Akko Kane Prize. So now as we continue with our discussion, Okay, Hello. we have another person calling in now. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Dialogue Box on Blossom Nigeria. Yeah, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Rupert. All right. And um, I'd like to make a comment with regard to the trend or as to whether the school should be open or not. Okay. Now, so based on my opinion, you know, I think the way that people are actually, you know, propagating or talking about the issue of corona, I think, to me, it's a scam. Because, <laughs> you know, as in, we all know that this is, you know, a means for people to just try and uh, kind of like get money from the government and all that. Yeah. What stops, what stops the government from opening up the schools? Because when they open up the schools, it's actually for the betterment of the students. Mm. Even if they want to make further arrangements or what have you mm. for the students, definitely that can come in afterwards. Yeah. But that should not be what is going to stop or make us tell the government that they are not supposed to open up the school. So crying out loud, the students have stayed at home for almost getting to six months or uh, five to six months or so, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And as, as a result of that, most of them have, don't even have the opportunity or the capability to study online like uh, most people have mm. what how do we go about the people that the less privileged that their only source of reading is all those um schools that you know give them free education and all that yeah. i'm trying to say that we should stop them from going to school that's not right education is the future for the students because when they are educated they get to become better people than the current politicians that we have now that are using doing okay. drama for us all uh, all, all, uh, all around the, 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 the country. Okay. So uh, for me, I believe that the school should be open. Even if they're making any further arrangements, then that should be something that will come afterwards. After all, we've had a series of people, you know, talking about um, drugs that can actually cure the coronavirus. Mm. What is the, uh, what, what exactly has the people, you know, what, what are the steps that they have actually taken? Okay, these things that people are, you know, talking about mm. that it's fast. Have they tried to prove it, or you know, to see that it is actually real? Okay. Nobody has done that. Or oh, they just know if, if anybody comes up, they'll say it's not true. It's not true. Mm. Who tried it and it didn't work? And it didn't work. Okay. So if all these things should be put into place, then I don't see a reason why the students should not have the schools open. We need the schools to be open. Let our students go back to school. Okay. Let them go and read and study. To become the better, the better use that we have always them that they are meant to be. Yeah. That is my own take. All right. Thank you so, so much. That's a very, a very good uh, position that you have taken. But also, like you have said, 
the students, they don't need to stay back at home any further. Not all of them can afford uh, online uh, courses or training. But even with that, just like our last caller has said, a lot still needs to be done in upgrading the facilities and making provision for all that uh, the safety measures that both the government and the health sector think should be in place before st uh, students should be called back to school. But even with that, just like the last caller said, students should still be in school and do the learning and everything can be done simultaneously. And according to him, he said it's a scam. So we are not here to check which one is correct. Is this scam? Is it correct? But what we know is that students should go back to school. And as much as they are going to school, a lot should also be done to upgrade the, the facilities simultaneously. Because the more you ask them to stay at home, according to what he just said, may not be to the advantage of the students themselves. A lot of them might just while away the months and at the end of it all, it's as if they never went to school. So a lot should be done to work towards the reopening of schools in that sense. Then the previous scholars are of the opinion that the ASU president is actually right. Let's take some of the uh, counsel or the advice that the ASU president gave to the government here. Now, recently, ASU president, Professor Biodu Oguyemi, has advised the federal government against reopening of schools. So he said our schools should remain closed till it is safe for students. That's his position. And he added that even if the government reopens schools, that's general uh, secondary schools and the rest, that public universities may not resume due to the outstanding crisis between the union and the federal government. So in essence, students attending federal universities should not even hope to resume post COVID-19. So in other words, no matter what happens, nothing will make the schools res resume, even if the government has given a directive. That's the position of the ASU president, Professor Biodun Oguyemi. So according to analysts, like our last caller just said, says, sadly, incessant strikes are among the factors contributing to the relegation and devaluation of our education system. Not only does it devalue the system, it affects students who may not or rather, who may get entangled in vices such as thuggery, robbery, prostitution, because an idle mind, according to the, some of these analysts, is a devil's workshop. So no doubt, if this strike continues, the future of this country will be at stake. Because when the young people are not being educated, no learning is going on, it's, it's a very dangerous situation for any country to be in. So. Though ASU has valid reasons for maintaining their stance against the reopening of schools, the question is, will it be to the interests of the students to ask them to remain at home because of disagreement between the federal government on terms and conditions of schools being open for learning? Very, very, is a very key point for us to ponder on, both on the government angle and the student's angle. So as much as we have taken quite a number of calls today, a lot of it has been on the uh, in support of the ASU president, which is excellent, it's good. But like we said, that is the ideal situation. And is the government really ready to meet up with this ideal situation as soon as possible so that the year will not end and meet the students at home and nothing much happened. And even 2021 coming knocking on the door and nothing much is done. We believe that a lot should be done, yes. You know, the right measures are being put in place. The right steps are being taken by the government. All that they need to do to upgrade the facilities, the sanitization, the hygiene levels, whatever else they need to do should be in place. But at the same time, the students may not have to be at home for all this period. And just like the previous scholar, just before the one that uh, we just spoke with now, she said that everything should go on at the same time so you don't keep the students at home and at the same time you are also working on these facilities to see to it that what you said we're going to do you have a plan for it you can announce and say this is the blueprint for what we have in mind for the resumption of, of schools these are the upgrades that we need to do facilities uh, whatever else renovation maintenance you know 
uh, whatever else needs to be done, there is a plan for it from the government. So we believe that these are the things that should be done. And at the same time, students should not be kept at home. So as much as possible, we want our students to do well. And at the same time, we want the government to take the right steps as soon as possible. So we thank you so much for calling in, for chatting with us, for having uh, everything that uh, we needed to hear from you at this stage. And some of us, we even said, send your comments and let's see what and what you have said concerning. You will have some of the comments. We can even take some of them now. Oh, we still have a number calling in. Just a quick one. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Who is on the line? My name is Chinkwe. I'm calling from Lagos, Kenya. Okay. I, I quickly want to make a contribution to what you are saying and uh, to give a kind of a, a heads up. Okay. I, I think regarding also um, saying that the government should put in place facility for the safety of our children before they resume. I don't think that uh, uh, condition is too much for the government to comply. All right. I don't think so. I don't think so. First and foremost, if election comes in, government will bring out all available funds to make sure that uh, what do you call it, election takes place. So what are we asking for? We need sanitizer. We need uh, uh, water running water. We need sick pay to be up and running. We need a uh, uh, emergency in the uh, in the schools. All that asking for is in line with the required standard for education. Yeah. Government is actually very insincere when it comes to education in Nigeria. Very very insincere. Very very insincere. You are telling that you are telling us you are telling to send our children to school by next month. But yeah. And let me ask you, my mother, mother blows up. Have you ever, have you, have gone and, have you seen that government is putting any structure in place to accommodate students coming to school? That's what we are saying. We are, we are also... There, there, there is simply no structure in place. As I'm talking to there you... There should be a plan. No and as soon as place. possible, they should start with that immediately. That's what we are saying. There should be there's people get towards this COVID-19. What is wrong if the government... The government has, has six months. Six months to renovate school, yeah. to put school in proper condition. During this COVID-19, nothing is being done. Yet we, we hear of people investing in, in, in to one billion naira in NDC, NDC. <laughs> you know, and so on. And things going on like that. And what, are we, what kind of nations we run? What are we asking for is a mandatory uh, requirement for you to set up a school. Yeah. So if we say, oh, if we say, okay, uh, we don't have the money, why can't we have the money? Recently, we saw the budget in education being slide class down. So this shows that the government is serious in terms of moving the developing the nation. No, it's not. But uh, there is no nation that can develop without education. And if government is clashing the budget for education, tell me what future does Nigeria have? Okay. That's all the things we start looking at. Okay, let's even look at it. Uh, you, you, the other time, uh, you, you told the caller, it does uh, it, 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 the time and it was enough can it do it. And practically, yes. Okay. The government may not have to do everything alone. That is where where uh, a private government partnership comes into play. All right. You can bring in private companies, companies to handle schools for you. Where where might you give them leverage? That's how what government is all about. You know, even if you don't have all the money, bringing okay, for example, that grow spend so much money in advertising, so much money in a uh, in a in the ambassador. They are doing so much more in sports, so mm. much more. If you bring in a company like Blue, or a company like SPS, a company like a, 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 a bank, CPA, access, but you bring them on board, okay? We have social number of schools. What can you do for us in this area? Yeah. We need a leverage on this area. That is development. Okay. Now, what is so difficult in doing that? It just takes a normal way to run the economy, to run the, to run, to run the system. Oh, we don't right. have to wait for all the money. Even the budget has been reduced. Look for ways of partnering with
Okay, what we'll do is that I think we'll need to still discuss part of this. Maybe in uh, after our Let's Talk presidency, we can still give a little more attention to this. But for now, we just have to round off our program right now. But we got your point that the government has what it takes and they can start, just like we said earlier, immediately as soon as possible to put in the right measures in the maybe correcting the facility, the maintenance or upgrading or whatever else they need to do. And you also said, you talked about the maybe hand sanitizers, the other things that they need to do in all the schools across the nation. And you also mentioned public private partnership. Am I right? Yes. Okay. That so if, of, yeah, man, yeah. Are you aware that in a, in a typical public school, there are about 80 to 100 children in a class? Yes, which is even on the high side. 100 children in a class, and it's time to have all those students. Where is the social distancing? How are they going to maintain the social distancing? This is the time for us to look at some of our sports facilities that are high, that are, uh, that are high, that are not being used for anything, converted to schools. Well, okay. We to this in place. Okay. Who can get this running? Hello, okay. sir. So, what we'll do is that on, on Monday we will we will still need to look into this education sector because I'm looking forward to it. Yes, because I start the government kids for I start for rather. All right. Okay. All right. We'll still look into education sector on Monday and we'll still need to look at some of these areas that are still crying for attention. But thank you so much for calling in uh, calling in today. We, we appreciate thank your call. All right. So this is a, a beautiful dialogue box and thank you for all the dialogue that we had together this morning. It was fun. So like we have said, we are moving on and tomorrow is Friday. So we are talking presidency tomorrow. So even with the Salah holiday and everything, I think I'll have more of us that will be able to maybe make calls and send in your, your comments and let us also read out what you think. And guess what? Our candidate for tomorrow or the individual that has been nominated as a likely candidate for the 2023 election is Al-Haji Aminu Tambua. So that's the person we'll be looking at tomorrow. So what do you think about him? Is it the right uh, candidate that Nigeria should, or Nigerians should feature for such a major election? What are the pros and the cons? And like we always say, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If it doesn't have any ugly or the bad, no problem. We can just work with the good. But what we'll do is that tomorrow we'll look critically at the individual Al-Haji Aminu Tambowal on Let's talk presidency. So thank you so much for being with us today. We look forward to having a wonderful day and you continue to excel in all that you do. I am Blossom and I believe in the Nigerian dream.